gentlemen, the sort of people that I enjoy having around and having watch me. Welcome back to the Dangerous Treasures Workshop. I'm Dangerous Trevor here with the uh, conclusion of the Dangerous Mulberry Bowl. That was a lot of dangers, but the truth is that wood is nasty. It's got a split about a 64th of an inch, maybe even a 32nd down through it, that developed as it was drying and fallow in the fields. It was out there for more than a year, probably two or three, I might even guess four. Taking shots in the dark here. Not quite an expert on dry rot and wood looks. Maybe I will be in the future, but that's in the future, that's not the day. Either way, let's see if it splits on me.
All right, I did turn that down. You've seen I used the sharpest chisel I possibly could by uh, sharpening the chisel. Uh, there is a bunch of splitting on this one. But you know what, it was pre-split, but I filled the holes with super glue to add a little bit of a structural reinforcement there. Uh, there is some tear out, which I'm not liking. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna hit it up with a bit of uh, 60 grit before I hit it up with my last little piece of 150 grit. You can see a little piece there. But attached it to the roll, I have to get more of that on order. But uh, this has a lot of character to this grain. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna do this one with the boiled linseed oil just to really make that pop because that oil finish is really gonna differentiate the grains. Let's get this zoomed in for a real nice close-up so we can uh, get this final reveal going. Just using this boring boiled linseed oil what with a uh, cobalt manganese salt dryer in it. I did some Googling. The worst it'll do to you is uh, if you drink it, it'll give you a bit of the runs. Look at that popping out and just a little bit of a yellow shade to it. Oh, that's beautiful. Got my dog screwing around at the door. Big old nerd she is. Here's one of them cracks that adds so much character. Looks like that was near a branch. Sugar, it's not like I'm murderizing you. You can go away from the door. I'll, I'll meet up with you later. Yeah. So much figure in this bowl. That's beautiful. I was really afraid that, that this was gonna just absolutely kill me. Ooh, you can still get those rays right there. See them adjusting in the light. Ooh, it's beautiful. I'm just gonna spin that real quick. Make sure that coat is good and thin. Fairly even. Oh yeah, that's freaking gorgeous. All right, let's hit up on this inside, do the same thing now. Just adjust you around. Oh, let's see if I can't get my tripod in a goofy angle. Half underneath this lathe, half not underneath this lathe. Just bear with me for a second, party people. There we go, that's an acceptable angle, I do believe. Let's get this rim. It doesn't take much linseed oil to get this done. Matter of fact, you use too much and uh, it'll never dry. I don't want it to never dry. Ah, oh, man, this is a beautiful hunk of mulberry. Wooey. I was expecting this linseed oil to turn it a little bit darker. Maybe that uh, walnut spoiled me with that nice dark wood. That was a big old pile of oil I just put on there. I better wipe most of that off. Actually, interesting story. We all heard stories as a kid of uh, oil-soaked rags catching fire. Well, that wasn't for motor oil, that was linseed oil. Linseed oil is air oxidizing. And uh, as such, it actually generates heat as it dries. So a pile of linseed oil soaked rags will catch on fire, so I gotta be extra careful with this. I'll actually end up laying it out just for a while until I actually throw it away. Make sure it's fully oxidized. Let's get that uh, burnished one more time. Make sure that that's nice and thin. Oh, isn't that just gorgeous? All right, this one's shy of done. Just a little bit of uh, off-lathe work left on it. 
right, ladies and gentlemen, my tramp stamp finally came in. My touch mark wood I'm going to use to put the Dangerous Treasures logo in the words on everything I make. Problem is, bought it as a square. Most everything I work with is a circle. Got to cut those edges off. Going to do it on film because I know you appreciate that. Now, brass is quite soft and malleable, so I've got to be careful how I put this in the jaws of the vise. That saw is going to take forever. I don't have shit for a blade. This is getting the angle grinder. All right, I've got my face shield. I've got my respirator. Today I'm also wearing my hearing protection, which is good because I don't want to go deaf. It's also a quarter past five in the morning. So uh, it obviously shows I don't respect my neighbors. On it. Now that I got bulk of the material off, uh, I'm just going to smooth it out and round it. That'll be easiest to do here on a bench grinder. A little bit of rough just to get the shape a little bit better. And then a little bit of fine just to make it purdy because we all like purdy. Um, also, swept all the wood shavings far away from here. They're all in a pile still, but they're in a pile where its sparks will not fly into them. That is a very important facet of today's exercise. Well now, boys and girls, that's a hazard we want to avoid in the future. I just uh, grindered my angle grinder cord. Uh, I'm going to unplug that and replace that cord later. It's okay. I know electricity. All right, let's try this again. Now that I've checked my work area as a grown-up, continue on with the shaping. Oh yeah, that's right. First thing I did was secure power to uh, the power strip what this is plugged in. Now, you normally don't want to power your tools off of just a power strip, but I only run one tool at a time, keeping in mind that I am connected to a power strip. So I have secured power, I'm going to unsecure power after turning this back off. Unsecured. There goes my microwave. Angle grinder. No, bench grinder. Here's an issue we got, this handle. I need to put this thing in some tooling, what to get some actual force to get my stamp into some harder woods that may or may not be perfect, get that really jabbed in there good. Um, best part about removing handles, turners. Handles are uh, kind of the thing we do. It's easy, they're simple to replace. This is bread and butter. Is that glue? 
That's glue. Why would they glue? You know what? They probably have that reason for glue. I'm just gonna allow it. Oh, that's splitting real nice. That's a very straight piece of wood. I am kind of happy about the quality of the handle, believe it or not. Just not happy about the fact that there is a handle. Which, as I said, it's nothing personal. It's just not what I really wanted. But I don't know if I could have ordered that without a handle. No, I don't believe I could have. Either way, gotta keep going. I am using my generally dull hatchet because if I was using a sharp hatchet, I'd be crying like a little girl right now running it against uh, metal like this. Don't know what metal this is. I want to say it's probably a low grade stainless. You wouldn't use a carbon steel. That would be stupid waste. And I don't think it'd be a mild steel because it does expect to get hot. Hot oxidizes. Oxidation is rust. And nobody likes rust. I mean, I'm literally guessing here. If it's not a low-grade stainless, I would be surprised. We'll uh, find that out after years of use. Even after years of use, I don't think it'd be an issue. I mean, the head is brass, and it's got boring standard little screws in it, so I could replace that handle real easy. There we go. That's nice and clean. Just gonna run over that with, I don't know, piece of sandpaper. Once that's got a piece of sandpaper run over it, uh, that'll fit right into the chuck of either my drill press or my lathe. And considering my drill press is about as short as, well, dirty joke here, I'm gonna end up just using a lathe to get my uh, pressure. So this is my first time trying this out. I really hope it uh, plays out well. I have been warming this up just on a hot plate. It's a pretty cheap hot plate. It's a functional hot plate. I don't think it gets all that hot, but it did heat it up a little bit. So let's see if that's hot enough. What I'm gonna do, what, Ooh, okay. That was fun. I'm gonna run this up against this uh, just round I have here. Give me a flat surface. Clamp it down, give it a little bit of pressure, pull it out. Don't think it's quite there yet. Let's keep warming it up without doing that. One more check. Um, it looks like I'm getting some nice little burn marks there at the bottom. That's from the bottom of my bowl shape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a random piece of lumber and see how it puts on this, I don't know, something slightly flatter. What do I have over here? There we go. There's a cute little piece of walnut I'll grab. Wow, this camera focus is questionable. Let's see if I can't get it to, uh, there we go. Let's give it some good pressure. Get it on there. Get that torque you. All right, let's give it a good mark. I think it's ready. That wasn't particularly flat. So, uh, 
I'm hoping it'll work better when I put it up against an actual bowl. Just with a little flat spot on it. Don't know why I'm heating it up a little bit more. This thing has the thermal density of your mama combined with the North Pole, I tell you. Whew. Probably should have tested to see if this uh, fit in my little anti tenon I made because this may or may not work. Really hope it does. All right. There it is. Bowl up here, kind of get it lined up. This is not as smooth as I was hoping it would be. Lock down, pressure. Let's not crack the bowl, shall we? It's about as far as I want to go with that. Undo the heat. this bad boy. Didn't get my name there, but it did get my symbol. I'll take it. Didn't really prepare the bottom of this one for uh, actually getting the touch mark on it, but that's a pretty good starting point. I think you'll agree with me. That's kind of bad. I'm gonna finish this up and maybe throw away all of the video I took this morning. Hee 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 hee. This is my round. Oh, that's cute. Hmm. That was a thrilling exercise in uh, not killing myself. I'm actually very amazed that that didn't split as I was working on it. Um, you can still see it, these giant cracks all up and down the side. I mean, those are probably a 64th of an inch thick. Uh, that super glue I stuck in there really helped it. But you know what? I'm glad I did this because this wood has so much character. I mean, look at this. Let's drag this in. You can just see if it can focus, if it is focused. That might be focused. I mean, you can just see that character all in the outside. You can see the character all on the inside. That is just a beautiful piece of wood. I have found that the more dangerous the wood is to turn, the more beautiful it ends up becoming. The more beautiful it ends up becoming, well, the happier I am and the better I look. So once again, party people, I'd like to thank you for your patronage and viewing me. Y'all have a great evening.